So you've been asked to MC your friend or perhaps your family member's wedding, and now you're wondering what you need to do to make sure they have the best reception ever. First off, congratulations, MCing a wedding. It's such an honor and a privilege and something that you should be really excited. The fact they asked you to do it means they think very highly of you. I've had the benefit of MCing a few weddings in my life and I've learned a lot through those processes. And today I am going to share the tips that I use for MCing a wedding to make sure that it runs as smoothly as possible. So my first tip to you is to meet with the couple beforehand. You don't want to meet with them too much beforehand and you don't want to leave it too late, but you definitely want to schedule a time perhaps two months or one month before the wedding where you sit down with both the bride and the groom and you chat a little bit about what they want their reception to look like, what the structure of the evening will be, and how you can make sure that you are checking all of the boxes that they are imagining for their special day. So there's a few things you want to determine when you meet with the couple beforehand. One of those things is who specifically they would like you to give special recognition to. Often this includes family members such as parents, grandparents, siblings, or perhaps somebody who has traveled from quite a ways to be there on their special day. It's a very nice thing when you're able to know these people's names and identify them on the night of the reception and really just give them that special recognition that they deserve and allow everyone to know who those people are. A second thing you may want to find out is whether or not the couple wants a bunch of clinking glasses because we know at every wedding, that's one of the first things people do is they start clinking their glasses for the bride and the groom to kiss. And that's nice, but from time to time, especially as the drinks are flowing, people do it more and more and can become a little bit distracting. So perhaps the couple is okay with the clinking the first time, but then you can introduce a more fun way to get the bride and groom to kiss than just the, the typical standard clinking of the glass. A third thing to find out is specific information about the wedding party. So I love to give the bride and groom a little bit of homework and have them provide me with a one or two sentence description of all of the people who are part of their wedding party so that when I have the mic and I'm announcing and I'm introducing the wedding party, I have maybe something nice about each of those individuals and then maybe a little fun fact or something that's a little bit funny, humorous to get the laughter rolling early in the reception. You're also going to want to find out the general structure of the night and whether or not you can introduce perhaps some games or fun things to fill some of the time, perhaps shortly after dinner, before the speeches. It's all about what the couple wants, but what you need to know as well is that so many couples will ask you for your advice. What do you think we should do in this case? So be prepared to provide them with some ideas. Ultimately, it's their day. They're going to choose what they want, but if you can give them some suggestions, it's actually going to be very helpful and might put their mind at ease for the reception. You're going to want to find out who specifically they're planning to have give a speech at the wedding and then on the day of that's going to give you a chance to connect with those people and make sure that they're aware when they're speaking but it helps you build out the order of who is speaking and when because that is typically one of the most important parts of a reception. A final tip for that pre-meeting with the couple is to find out anything that's off limits. So you never want to go too close to that line at such an important event like somebody's wedding. But humor is a big part of a wedding reception and you do want to have the ability to make people laugh. But it's important to check what the couple thinks about that and what jokes are okay and what jokes might cross the line. And so you can be open and honest. It's fun to have some surprises for them, but you don't want to surprise them in a negative way. So anything you're unsure about, 
chat to the couple beforehand, find out where they're at in turn some couples they're like oh go for it make any sort of joke it's going to be hilarious other couples are more concerned oh, my family member might not love this so much so you want to make sure that you're respecting them because the last thing you want to do is embarrass them too much on their special day all right so that was step one meeting with the couple one month two months before the actual wedding and then from there on you can pretty much just go back with emails if there's any loose ends to tie up now for the pre-event, the little bit of preparation. After you've met with the couple, now you have a bit of an idea of what the structure of the night will look like. My piece of advice for this is don't wing it. A great MC does not completely wing it when it comes to a wedding reception. Sure, they may make you think that they're just doing it off the top of their head, but great MCs actually are prepared and planned out for the evening. This means taking notes, and I've heard some people talk about using an iPad or perhaps a phone to read your notes off of. That's okay, especially if you're very comfortable with those pieces of technology, but let me warn you, I have also been to weddings where something goes wrong. The iPad crashes, they forgot to bring a charger, something along those lines, and that's the last thing you want to do, especially if you really need those notes. You do not want to have a disaster. Nothing wrong with a good Good old piece of paper or cue cards are even better. They're small, they're not intrusive, and they are things that you can reference throughout the evening. Now with that said, I encourage you to take notes, but don't take too many notes. What I mean by that is you do not want to write out word for word all of the things you're going to talk about throughout the night. Sure, some things like the wedding party introduction, you might want those few sentences word for word, but other than that, you don't want everything written out word for word. For example, if there are special instructions you need to give about the cutting of the cake, you don't want to write those out word for word, just write cutting of the cake and then in your practice, you'll know what you're going to talk about for that section. So your notes should be one or two words that identify the thing that you're going to talk about, but you should not write everything out perfectly word for word because then you're gonna be standing up there with a sheet of paper with your head buried and that does not make for a great MC. Before the wedding day, you also want to practice. So don't just go through this the first time when you're in front of everyone. Make sure you run through it. You can always record yourself to see how it goes. You can practice a few key parts of the evening in front of a friend or a family member that you trust to give you some feedback of what you're doing well and what you're not. But it is so important to practice before you get to the actual night. It's just going to give you all the more confidence because you've done this a few times already. So now it's no big deal. It's just in front of a few more people. And the final tip before we jump into the actual day of is you want to dress the part. So as MC, you need to make sure that you are dressed, if, you, if you're a male, in a suit and a tie or perhaps a bow tie or suspenders. And if you're a female, again, all of the female dress code to make sure that you are at a certain level because you don't want to show up casually in jeans or something along those lines. You are a really big part of that wedding day, so you wanna make sure that you are dressed appropriately. All right, so now you've made it to the day of. You've done all your homework, you are prepared. Now you show up on the day of. There are a few things you want to do. First off, for the reception, you wanna make sure that you show up well enough in advance that you can get totally prepared if you have anything like slides or any sort of props or anything like that. You wanna make sure you're able to set those up before most people have arrived. You also wanna connect with a few key people. For example, if the couple has a DJ, it is so important to get to know who the DJ is. Oftentimes there's a little bit of crossover in terms of responsibilities between the DJ and the MC. So you wanna have a quick conversation with that person and make sure the two of you are on the same page. You'll also want to meet with the wedding day of coordinator if this couple happens to have one. Again, that person's responsibility is to make sure the day runs smoothly. So you wanna connect with them and understand what their 
expectations of you are as well to make sure both of you are on the same page. And finally, one of the big aspects of a reception is the dinner. So in some weddings, you may have to talk to the cooks or whoever is organizing in charge of the meal. You want to make sure that your timing matches up what they have prepared because they're putting a lot of effort into that meal and you want to make sure that your timing matches. So when the meal is ready to go, you are getting people up and getting them fed because they'll be hungry after a big day of wedding and drinking and all of the things that go into it. So you want to make sure that the timing runs smoothly throughout. So have all of those conversations with the people you need to talk to before the guests start arriving. If the guests get there a little bit early, go over, introduce yourself to them, be really friendly. All the little things that sometimes we forget to do, we have so many things on our mind. Make sure you're smiling, high energy, because that is going to translate and you're going to bring that to the microphone once you introduce the wedding party. And that is the big part of most receptions is the introduction of the wedding party. So again, this is something you wanna chat with the bride and groom about, coordinate with the DJ, because most weddings have a great grand entrance where you introduce the couple for the first time, as well as all of the wedding party members. Maybe they do a little dance as they come in. I don't know what that was, but make sure that you do a great job and you're high energy as you're announcing those names. Make sure the audience knows, ladies and gentlemen, welcome John and Sarah, something like that. Have your voice be loud enough, emphatic enough, because that is going to set the tone for the evening. Now, after the head table and the bride and groom have sat down so often, people start clinking the glasses. So this is where it's important to know what the bride and groom expect. I always love to let that happen once. So somebody clinks the glasses and then I turn to the bride and groom and say, you two know what that means and they do the kiss. But if they wanted something different, such as a game or maybe a couple has to come up and duplicate the same kiss that the bride and groom does or they have to sing lyrics from a love song usually there's some way of making it a little more fun to get the bride and groom to kiss and plus it's not the clinking of glasses all night which can get a little bit annoying for any of you who have been to weddings like that the next part you're going to want to make sure that you introduce yourself let everyone know who you are what your relation to the bride and groom is and that you are so honored to be there on their special day and that you're really excited about the evening. This is also an opportunity if you have a little short story that's maybe something that's pretty funny, this is your chance to tell that to get the audience laughing early. One of the first questions in everyone's mind who's attending a reception is, is the MC going to be good? Is he or she going to actually be funny? And if you can get them laughing early, it's going to relax everyone in the crowd. They're going to know that they're in for a good night, but it also relaxes you. It gives you a form of confidence when you can get the audience or everyone in attendance laughing. It is such a confidence booster and it's going to make the rest of the night enjoyable rather than stressful. My advice though, if you're telling a story about your Yourself, keep it short, right? You don't want to go on and tell a 10 minute story. It's not speeches time, right? But if you can tell something that maybe is two or three minutes and it's a great story that you know is sure to get laughs, that is a good way to introduce yourself and like I say, get that humor going right away. Next off, you're going to want to make sure to recognize the wedding party. Who are these people? And this is where the homework part came in handy. The bride and groom have written you out descriptions, so you're simply going to read off and do some practice so you don't have to just be staring at your notes when you read those off, but you can have them with you in case you forget word for word how the bride and groom described each of these people. Now for most receptions, the last portion of the evening, and again, every reception is different, so it might not be this way for the one you are emceeing, but oftentimes the speeches are the way that the evening concludes before, of course, you get into cutting the cake and the dance and all of those sorts of things. But speeches are typically one of the last portions that you will be responsible for as MC. Now you wanna make sure that you talk to the speakers beforehand so for example, the best man, the maid of honor, perhaps the parents, and let them know the order that they're going to be going in. It allows them to be mentally prepared for their speech. 
and you want to set them up for success. So when you are announcing the speaker, make sure after you announce that person and you put up the mic that you start clapping for them as they come up to the podium or in front of the crowd. It helps build their confidence. There's something about the clapping right before you give a speech that helps just get you ready and fired up for delivering that speech. Likewise, after the speech is done, make sure that you take the mic back and say, hey, let's give it up for Sally. What a great speech, Sally. And again, start clapping for them. Get that clapping going before and after the speech to help out the speaker. Now, a couple of last final tips for you as MC. Tip number one, don't get drunk. I know that might seem obvious or maybe it doesn't seem obvious and you're saying, wait a second, you can get drunk, just get drunk after your MC. I'm not saying you can't drink, but you wanna limit it because you need to be on point. You need to be able to really quarterback that reception and there's a lot riding on you doing a great job, which you're going to do, but if you get drunk, a lot of people won't love that fact of it. They will not appreciate that you're taking the role seriously. So you can have a drink or two, but definitely don't get drunk until after your MC responsibility is finished. The last tip I would give, and this has been true for every wedding I have MC'd, that is to expect the unexpected. There is always going to be things that come up on a wedding day that you did not plan for. That is just the way it is because with weddings, with events, things happen that nobody could have predicted, but your ability to roll with the punches and say, yeah, that's no problem. We'll switch that up. We'll change the order of this. Dinner's ready early. Great. We'll get everyone fed early. No problem at all. That's going to relax everyone else, especially the bride and groom. As far as they're concerned, the evening should feel like it's going flawless. You don't want to have anyone stressed out or concerned. So by you being calm and confident and prepared, you're going to help make the day phenomenal. I hope this video has been helpful. I would ask you comment below, are there specific questions you have about the big day? I'd love to jump in those comments and start communicating with all of you about what you're thinking leading up to the wedding that you're going to be emceeing. Did I miss any tips? Feel free to list them below. I would also ask you subscribe to my channel. So I'm all about communication and impactful communication and I have a ton of video content and more on the way which is focusing on great communicators. Finally, if you liked this video, then actually like it. Give it that thumbs up. You don't have to smash the thumbs up, but just you know, gently press thumbs up. I really appreciate it. It helps me out on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching this video and good luck. You're going to crush it as MC.